Club Booktube, who's up for an April book haul? Um, I have 16 books to show you, and I won't be getting any more books in the last week of April, so now is as good a time to haul the books as any. I was planning on doing this haul next Friday, but um, my weekly reads plans for next week involve a few of these books, so I decided to go ahead and haul them today when, since I've already gotten all of the books in, surprisingly, I got the last one in yesterday. So let's get started. So the Vanguard uh, book for this book haul is Heart Divided by Jin Yong, uh, the pen name of Louis, Louis Cha. Um, this is the concluding volume in the Legends of the Condor Heroes novel. Um, the Legend of the Condor Heroes is a massive, I mean, it's for four volumes of um, epic um, historical fantasy set during the waning decades of the Southern Song Dynasty before the Mongolian conquest. The novel uh, follows the adventures of Guo Jing, a, the son of a uh, Song Patriot who was raised in Mongolia as a sort of foster son of uh, Genghis Khan. And the Legends of the Condor Heroes details his uh, adventures in the Wulin, the martial artist community of uh, Jin and Song China during his late teens. His conflict with um, the Jin, particularly his uh, revenge against Wanyang Hongli, his complicated relationship with his blood brother Yang Kang, his a relationship with Lotus Wong, and his adventures and conflict with uh, various patriotic and less than patriotic uh, martial artists throughout the Wulin. Um, I've read the first three volumes of the novel earlier this year, um, Hero Born, Bond Undone, A Snake Lies Waiting, and looking forward to uh, finishing up the novel in May. And hopefully the other two novels in the Condor Heroes trilogy will be uh, translated in the coming years. I need to look and see if um, whatever the first part of the re Turn of the Condor Heroes or the Romance of the Condor Heroes is going to be out because I really love that one too. Um, well, I haven't read it, but I've watched some clips on YouTube of it and quite enjoyed it. Anyway, so next up in the only other novel I'm hauling this month, and with some trepidation, is uh, First Become Ashes by K.M. Zapara. Um, this is the Sabara's a sophomore novel. Um, his first book came out last year, Docile. Um, and this one is very similar. I think um, Sabara has a certain sort of kinks he likes to write about. And in this novel, which is a kind of contemporary fantasy, it posits that... Um, magic or this cult uh, posits that magic is only possible through great suffering and so this cult basically cultivates suffering as an attempt to cultivate magic and when the members of this cult reach a certain age they are sent on a quest to slay a monster and obviously since it's set in the real world magic isn't real or is it and uh, I do have some trepidations about this novel, um, as I do with a Docile. Um, I mean, Zipporah is, has a very sort of dedicated, like there's a kink that he's writing. Although I think this one's not as prominent as a Docile was. But I have heard, I've watched um, a very negative review that I thought was really quite good, so I'm kind of worried. But it might be a while before I get around to this. Um, 
have a docile on the docket for uh, June. So we shall see whether or not I like it or not. I mean, I do rather like Dennis Cooper. So there's, who knows? Um, anyway, so the next six novels, um, six novels. So the next six books are uh, poet, poetry collections. Um, so the first two I picked up from Midtown Scholar uh, through a Libris. Um, I've mentioned several times that I've gotten interested in university press sales. And one of the university presses that's currently having a sale is the University of Chicago. So when I first started looking at the University of Chicago's website to see what they have, um, I mean, the sells basically through a catalog. And then I was as interested in some of the poetry and fiction on that they offer as I was some of the history, which was in the catalog. So I was looking around and I saw you know, two of the volumes of poetry um, on sale for relatively inexpensive through Midtown Scholar, which I have to say, this is the first time I've used them and love their shipping. And also the quality of the books. It's really quite good. So the first book or first collection I picked up from them is uh, Troy Unincorporated by Francesca Abate. This is basically um, draws inspiration from uh, Chaucer's Troilus and Cressida and basically translates Troy from northern Turkey or north eastern or western Turkey to Michigan um, and so and I've dipped into it and I've quite enjoyed what I've read so far so I'm really looking forward to reading the whole of Troy and, and Incorporated and I also picked up The Lions by Peter Campion um, now this came out in 2009 I think and I really enjoy what I've read so far of it. And I'm looking forward to getting more into it. Um, I also read, um, he also has a more recent collection that came out just this year that I'm really interested in too and will probably pick up if I have time. Um, the next four I bought as one order through Alibris itself. Um, the first one is um, Luis Gluck. Um, Poems 1962 to 2012. This is um, uh, Luis Gluck is the most recent Nobel Prize winner in literature. Um, hopefully, preserving the prize from Bob Dylan's win. And I'm not entirely familiar with her poetry. I think I've read some of her work when I took a modern American poetry class, the class that introduced me to. Robinson Jeffers. I'm pretty sure I, some of her poems was in the, or some of her poems were in the anthology we read, which was more contemporary American poets. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to her work and exploring it. Uh, the next two uh, books are uh, from poets that I've been interested in for quite a while. Um, first up is The New Black by Evie Shockley. Um, I'm not entirely sure where I first encountered um, Shockley. I'm thinking it was either through um, the Lunch Points series that the University of California Berkeley puts on every few months or a similar poetry reading that maybe WGBH um, did um, on YouTube. Uh, but I've dipped into this uh, collection and quite liked what I've read so far. And in a similar vein to Evie Shockley, um, this collection by Gillian Connolly, um, a little more Red Sun on the Human is very similar. Um, I first encountered Gillian Connolly through her moderation of a lecture on the Commonwealth Club of California 
and then I kind of looked her up, uh, read some of her poetry, quite liked it, uh, watched um, her appearance on a bunch of poems through the University of California Berkeley YouTube channel or their events and quite enjoyed it poem so quite enjoyed to have I'm quite happy to have this collection I've been wanting it for a while as well as some of her other more recent work I'm looking forward to getting to it and the last poem um, I picked up in the month of April is quite similar to um, Troy and Incorporated and the Lions in that this is from a university press, in this case LSU, for which there's a sale on. And I was as interested in the poetry and fiction as I am the history. Um, and this is a Larva or Larvae of the Narrow Stars by Catherine W. Carter. Um, I think I was drawn to it largely by the cover, but I've dipped into this collection as well as I uh, read um, a poem on her website and quite liked it, so quite happy to have it and looking forward to reading it. Uh, next up, the next six books are all history. Um, no, eight books. I'm a dingbat guy, I can't count. There are six books from the University of Chicago and two that are used. Um, so I'm going to start with the ones that I got through at Libris um, before I hit the University of Chicago because that's kind of the big thing this uh, month. So first up that I picked up from uh, Powell's Chicago is The Woman Who Would Be King Has Set Toots Rise to Power in Ancient Egypt by Kara Cooney. Um, this is a biography of um, Hachette's foot, uh, one of the most important Egyptian pharaohs, and I would argue the most important uh, pharaoh who happened to be a woman. Um, looking forward to getting to this. Um, I'm quite interested in picking an um, like ancient biography and especially uh, the biographies of Egyptian pharaohs. I've read um, Cooney's more recent um, when women ruled the world that they didn't quite like, but I might revisit it because I think some of the ideas were quite interesting and I'm definitely looking forward to this, whether, I mean, no matter my previous experience with uh, Cooney's work. And the next book is from LSU that I picked up via um, Half Price Books. Um, largely because it would have been 20 something through the uh, sale on LSU and I picked this up for like $5 or 6 So I'm like, eh, I'm going to pick it up from the Libras. And that is um, Raised to Rule, Educating Royalty at the Court of the ha Spanish Habsburgs, 1601 to 1634 by Martha, by Martha K. Hoffman. So this is a history of how royal children are educated in this case in Spain and I'm quite looking forward to it. I read a little bit of the opening paragraphs um, last night and quite liked what I saw. Um, this book came in actually yesterday um, and quite thrilled. Can't wait, cannot wait to get to it. So now we get to the um, highlight of the month, um, the University of Chicago cell. Um, I picked up six books from the University of Chicago, all history. Um, the packaging was phenomenal, quite loved it. Um, nice little box that says University of Chicago on it. So let's get to the books. Um, I'm going to do this by geographical region, so Asia and on. So the first book is a work of Chinese history. It is The Water Kingdom by Philip Ball. Um, this is a history of China through its waterways, through the rivers and canals that really influenced Chinese development. And I'm quite looking forward to getting to it. 
The next book up is a pretty big one. It is The History of Bhutan by Karma Bunch Show, um, which is a big, massive um, history of Bhutan, which I, it's um, one of the border kingdoms between um, India and China. Looking forward to getting to that. Might get to that next month if I have time. So, moving from Asia, we're going to be visiting the island of Crete because I have two books on Cretan history. Now, first up is Knossos and the Province of Modernism by Kathy Gear. Um, this is a history that looks at the Minoans and I think more specifically our construction of the Minoans from the early 20th century on. I'm quite looking forward to getting to it. And speaking of Cretan history, how about A History of Crete by Chris Morey. This is much like a his the history of Bhutan. This is a soup to nuts history of Crete from the very earliest days. And really looking forward to getting to that. Sticking to the Mediterranean, I have um, also picked up Lords of the Sea, A History of the Barbary Corsairs by Alan G. Jameson, which is a history of um, the Barbary Corsairs. Looking forward to it. And finally, uh, moving to Northern Europe, a revolt in the Netherlands, the Eighty Years' War, 1568 to 1648, by Anton van der Leen, which looks at the uh, war for Dutch independence, I think, and quite looking forward to this. I have a sweet tooth or sweet for um, Dutch history. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to try to do a Steve Pyramid. I guess I can. Yeah, let's try Steve Pyramid real quick. Well, it's going to be two Steve Pyramids. First up, the fiction and poetry. And... The history. And I have way too much sense to not try to do a 16 book pile or 16 book pyramid. So that was my April book haul. Uh, for next month, I'm thinking I'm probably going to go back to the University of Chicago. There's a few more books on the cell catalog that I want as well as maybe a few works of um, uh, fiction that I'm finding interesting. I'm also going to probably hit up um, the University of Princeton. They've got a new cell on and there are quite a few books in that catalog that I'm really excited about. So I'll probably pick up a lot of them too. I'm not totally sure if this means I'll have any like new acquisitions of fiction or anything like that. We'll see. Um, and then I think in June, or like when I do May's book haul, whatever that looks like, I'm probably going to try to formulate a bit of a shopping plan for, or book acquisition plan for the rest of the year and see how that goes. But in anyway, booktube, I need to uh, put all of these books into my library and then organize them because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move um, my Jin Yong books from the J section to the C um, because I mean his real name is Louis, Louis Cha so I think they they should be under C instead of J so but I don't think the science fiction and fantasy will move a whole lot um, because I think I have enough space for Sapara to just slip into its little shelf. And then I think I have some space left over for A Heart Divided. And then, of course, I don't really bother too much with the poetries, how that's organized. And the history is a chaotic 
glorious chaotic mess and I kind of like it like that I don't know why it's like I have the science fiction and fantasy and the literary fiction or general fiction whatever you want to call this fiction over here in alphabetical order but I don't have the history it's in a glorious mess although I guess that's maybe more to do with um, like fitting the books into place rather than alphabetizing them and having to knock some of those books over when they don't quite fit into the shelves because my shelves aren't necessarily equal in size some are larger some are smaller so anyway I'm starting to ramble so I'll go ahead and get to work on cataloging and placing and I will see you later this evening with weekly reads which includes two bells and might be a bit contentious and ranty we shall see there's still plenty of time left for reading so until tonight or this evening thank you booktube have a great afternoon and stay safe